Okay then, so now I want to move on to a couple more data structures that we can use in Dart, which are lists and sets. So let's start with lists, which are a bit like arrays in JavaScript or Python. They're basically an ordered collection of values. Now we can make a list by saying var and then scores, for example, and then setting that equal to square brackets and inside those, whatever values we want in the list. In this case, because this is going to be a list of scores, we'll just add in a bunch of different integers. And when we do this, Dart is going to infer the type of this variable to be a list of integers. And we can see that in this bottom right panel down here, when we click on the variable name, it's going to say list, then in angle brackets, the type of data in that list, which is int in this case. We can add multiple types of data to a list, by the way, we don't just have to add one type. So we could add in a string to this list, like Mario, for example. And when we do that, Dart is going to infer the type of the variable now to be a list of integers and strings. And in the future, we could add values of both of those types to this list if we wanted to. I just want to have integers in this list though, so I'm going to get rid of the string value for now. So then, this is Dart inferring the type of this value to be a list of integers, right? And in the future, after we've kind of declared and initialized this variable, to be this list of integers, we can't add strings later on down in the code. It's only when we're first initializing a value, right? We can add multiple different types, but we can't then add different types later on. I hope that makes sense. But anyway, we can also explicitly type the variable by saying instead of var, list, and then angle brackets to say what type of data goes inside the list. So we could say int, for example. And now we're saying that this variable is a list which can only contain integer values. And if we try to add some other types of values, like strings, for example, then we will get an error. It won't let us do that now because we've explicitly said that this list now can only contain integers. All right, so now let's have a little play around with this list and see what we can do with it. First of all, I'm going to print something to the console. So use the print function. And now I want to print one of these values. So when we're trying to access one of these values, we just need to use the variable name, which is scores, then square brackets, and then pass in the index of whatever value we want. So when we're working with lists in Dart, we use zero index for the first element, then one, then two, then three, and so forth. So if I want to access the first element, I would use index of zero. I'm going to run this and hopefully we should see 50 over here in the console. We do. Cool. And what I'm going to do now is try to change this value. And to do that, we can say scores, then square brackets, the position of the element we want to change. So position zero in our case, and then we can set it equal to a new value like 25, like so. And now when we print that to the console, hopefully we'll see 25 instead of 50, which we do. Cool. Now, if we try to change this to a different type of value, like a string, then we should get an error because this right here is a string and we say that this list must be a list of integers. So we're not allowed to do that. So we can change the value of these, but not the type. So let's go back to changing this to 25 instead. Cool. So that's how we can access different elements or values inside a list and change them as well. What about adding new values? Well, to do that, we can say scores and then use the add method. And then we can just add on a new value like 100. And now if we print the scores, let's do that down here, print scores, then we should see this new value added to the list. I'm going to run this. And now we can see 100 at the end. Awesome. We can also remove values. So let's try that. We can say scores.remove and we need to pass in the value of whatever we want to remove. So for example, I could pass in 20. And if I run this, then we should see the 20 value has been removed. Awesome. Now, what if there were two 20s in this? Well, let's try running that again. And when we do that, you can see it just removed the first instance of 20 that it found. All right, I'm going to delete that again. Cool. We can also remove the last element. So remember, that's going to be actually 100 because we add it right here. So we can say scores.remove. And by the way, you can see all of the different things available to us down here, we're going to remove last and that's going to remove the last elements inside the list, which will be 100. So if we run this again, we shouldn't see 100 anymore and you can see it's gone. Awesome. 
All right, so what else have we got? Let's print out the scores.length. That's how many items are basically inside this list. So if we run this, then you can see it's three at this point because we've added, then removed two. All right, so that's the scores.length. Um, we can use the sh uh, shuffle method. So I can say scores.shuffle. And what that does is basically just randomly shuffle the order of these. So what I'm going to do is comment out the remove lines right here. So we should have all of these and the 100 at the end. But when we shuffle them, it's going to change the order. So when we print them out, they shouldn't be in that same order. So let's run this and see if it works. And you can see now 100 is there, 75, 99, 20, 25. So that's worked. Awesome. And let's also do one more function we can use. I'm going to say scores.index of, and then we'll pass in a value, which is 20. Now I'm going to comment out the shuffle. We can see that the index of 20 should be 0, 1, 2. So this should print out 2. We'll run this. And yeah, we can see 2. Let's do one other example. I'm going to say 99 which should be three. Awesome. Okay, so the other type of data I wanted to show you was the set. And a set is similar to a list in that it holds a collection of values. But unlike lists, sets are not ordered. And also they can't hold duplicates of any given value. So if I added a number to the list that we've got that's already included in that list, then this would be okay because lists allow duplicate values. But if that was a set, then that wouldn't be allowed because sets don't allow duplicate values. So then sets could be useful, I guess, if you don't want to allow duplicates of any value inside the set. For example, if you had maybe a set of emails that were all work employees, then you wouldn't want duplicate emails to be accidentally added to that set, would you? So we'd use a set for it. All right, so let's try making a new set and see how this works in practice. I'm going to create a new variable called names and I'm going to set that equal to a set, which we can create by using curly braces. And then we just need to add a comma separated list of values inside this set. So I could add strings like Mario, then a comma, Luigi, and also Peach. And then I'd have a set of string values. Now, if I was to click on the variable name, we should see in the bottom right corner that this is a set of strings. So again, Dart has inferred this type. It can see that this is a set of strings. But now let's also explicitly add type annotations to the variable, much like we did for the list. So I'm going to replace var with set instead. And then in angle brackets, what type of data we want in the set, which is going to be string. So now we have a set of string values. And if we try to add a different type in here, like an integer, we're going to get an error because that's not string. All right, so let's get rid of that. What happens if we try to add in a duplicate like Mario? Well, we should get a warning. And that warning says right here, two elements in a set literal should not be equal. Change or remove the duplicate element. So it's basically telling us that this is equal to that and it shouldn't be, so get rid of it. All right, so let's try printing this out. I'm going to say print names like so and running this and hopefully we should see that set over here in the console yes we do let's try adding this other value mario let's see what happens i'm going to run this because we didn't get an error by the way we just got a warning and you'll see that it doesn't actually get added to the set so where it sees a duplicate it basically says well no i'm not adding this because this is a set and we cannot have duplicates so let's get rid of that now we can add elements to a set. So I could say names.add and I could add like Bowser, for example. And also what I'm going to do is add a duplicate. So names.add and then I will add Peach again. All right. So if I now try to run this, hopefully we'll see Bowser is added. But Peach, even though there's no error here, Peach doesn't get added again because it's a duplicate. All right. So we can also remove elements so I could say names dot remove and we could remove Luigi from the set let's save that and run it and hopefully Luigi won't be in the set anymore yep now it's gone cool and we can also output the names dot length by using the length property I'm going to run this again and hopefully we should see three at the end of it if it eventually works 
Again, sometimes it does this. Sometimes you just need to refresh the page and run it again if it stalls. But hopefully, yeah, we see three now right at the end. Okay, so there we go, my friends. There's the basics of lists and also names. We'll probably be using lists more as we go through the rest of the course, but we might come back to names, uh, not names, sorry, sets again in the future too.